It's okay. It should start streaming anyway. Here we are. Let's tell all of our friends on Facebook that we're here. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is the Conservation Conversation episode 18. Episode 18. I can't believe this. I'm very excited to be back. Happy New Year's, everybody. It is 2020. And you know what? We're going to go see our friends on Facebook right now. We're going to go live, too. Turn this around. Here we go. Start the live video. Okay. So, hey everybody, it's good to see you. We're going to uh, get right into it here today soon. Uh, hey everybody on Facebook. Hello, hello, hello. Um, <clears throat> once again, if you can find my post on Facebook, that post will show you the link to go to um, my live podcast on YouTube. So, guess what, guys? It's 2020. There are so many changes in the works. It's hard to, hey, Colleen, hey, Sierra. Uh, it's really hard to even explain. There's so much happening right now. But um, there's a lot of changes. And I'm going to just say this. I'm not, I can't give anything away at the moment. But I have an amazing amount of opportunities this year to really go after corporate polluters. So we are on a mission. We are on a uh, determination this year like none other. Now, as many of you may know, uh, I take a drug called Undomzo, which is a radiation chemotherapy. Um, <clears throat> so, each one of these pills. So, you know, okay, what I wanted to start talking about today, before we get to the opening, what I wanted to talk about is the idea of, a lot of people say to me, and you know what, this holds in politics too, but a lot of people say to me, um, you can take the red pill or the blue pill, right? Remember, everyone remembers the matrix, and it's the red pill and the blue pill. Um... Hey guys, and if you're watching here on Facebook, please, there's a link on my Facebook page that'll pop you over to my YouTube page and you'll be able to see some of the graphics. So that's the big difference. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, I'm just doing it live because Facebook has blocked my ability to my show on Facebook. So I'm getting around it by just doing it live. I can't use my graphics and I can't use my videos or my nifty little intro in case you haven't seen it. Um, but on YouTube, there is the full version. And if you want to hang out on Facebook, if you can, go to YouTube and your comments will appear on the screen. So let's go back to the matrix concept. You're going to take the blue pill or the red pill, right? Um, and that makes it sound as if you have a choice. But my question is, what if life gives you a different pill that you have to take? Not the blue pill or the red pill. So mine's actually a mix of blue and red, ironically. Um, so I wanted us to think about the matrix. Think about the blue pill and the red pill. Think about the fact that sometimes life gives you a pill that you have to take. And for me, it happens to be radiation for my cancer. It's one o'clock, and this is the time I have to take it. So I could either push the show back and just take it on camera, uh, whatever. And I don't mind sharing with everybody what's happening. Uh, I became sick with cancer through environmental pollution, and this year I'm fighting back. And I'm happy that all of you are joining me on this journey because it means the world to me. Hey, Bruce, it's good to see you. Happy 2020, everybody. Hey, Glenn, happy 2020. Hey, Sheila, thanks for joining. Happy 2020. Happy New Year's. So a lot of changes. Now, one of the first big changes is uh, I am no longer uh, able to podcast from where I was. So I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit this year. I'm actually right now in pre one of Preemptive's offices. And behind me is, um, you'll see the the good old, there it is, the good old uh, backboard um, that I usually have. But I'm at Preemptive's office. Um, I can't really show you all this stuff, but there's a lot of their, this is where they do a lot of their uh, work over here. So. Um, anyway, I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Hey, Heather. Hey, Vicki. Nice to see everybody. Uh, okay, guys, so what we're going to talk about today is the reason I bring up cancer is because here I'm here at Preemptive. And again, CBD has helped me a lot with my cancer. Uh, I'm not selling the idea that you have to buy Paul's CBD, but buy CBD. Whether you're fighting a chronic illness or not, it, I can't even tell you how much I love it. Uh, anyway, preemptive, my friend Paul runs it. He has given me his one of his offices to use uh, while I'm bouncing around a little bit. So anyway, um, here we are. We're going to talk today about the EPA because, you know, what is cancer? Cancer is when your old dead cells start to transform 
into newer cells that are tumors and they feed off the old cells and they feed off the dead cells and they feed off the past. It's kind of weird if you think about it. It's almost like your past is literally trying to ruin your future. <laughs> There's a lot of memes about that. People talk about that very spiritually, but on a cancer level, it's not so spiritual, but it's just the truth. Anyway. Um, oh, good. Colleen says, yes, preemptive. It's, you know, and that's the thing. I want to talk about CBD. If you guys do order CBD and you don't order Paul's CBD and you say the CBD is not working, make sure that where you're getting your CBD is a very reputable source. There's a lot of good sources out there. Just make sure you're getting a good source. Um, so anyway, cancer. Um, cancer is, yeah, holding on to the past to the detriment of the future in a lot of, of ways. Now, you know, my cancer is, it's incurable, it's operable. I'm taking these radiation pills in an effort to try to shrink these tumors uh, and I have been eating healthy, I eat vegan, and I do my best to do natural as best that I can. But um, for me, it's going to require a little bit of help here and there. So today we're going to talk about cancer of the body politic. The problem we have is that a lot of us are getting these environmental sicknesses from companies that are not responsible and they're polluting into our waters. And we have a major issue where the bodies that are supposed to be taking care of us are selling us out for profit. And our health is being sold for the profit of these other companies. So um, it's very personal to me. And today we're gonna to talk about the EPA, the first body that has really become a great example of the cancer of the body politic. Anyway, remember everybody, it's our world. Let's talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and start to show up and we're gonna get the chat going and let's talk some more. Episode 18 popped on sooner than expected. So one quick second here, everybody. I am going to get my chat on. And as soon as we get the chat on, we're in good shape here. So if you can pop over to my YouTube, you will see that this chat, uh, as soon as you work your way into it uh, and come watch me on YouTube, you will be able to put your things on there. Hey, Mike, legend. Hey, it's Michelle. Hey, hey, Shelly. Uh, and Colleen, yes, I'm definitely going to try to work on cancer. So you know, what, what we need to talk about today, again, is cancer of the body politic. And the greatest example is the EPA, because there have been so many changes in the EPA this year. And, you know, there's a lot of great institutions that do uh, take care of, of, um, of, of the environment. But I'm going to tell you right now, unfortunately, EPA is no longer one of those. So uh, here we go, guys. Give me one quick second. I am just going to get this chat on live so that we can get everybody's conversation. Again, if you're watching on Facebook, I'm doing it live because my show has been censored. So I'm just doing a live video. If you can run over to my YouTube, you will find live chat and you can come join us. Hey, Andrea, thanks for joining us. And uh, Mike Nepper's here. And Shelly is basically a sister is, is here as well. So fantastic. Um, so everybody, what we wanna do is start off with today's quote, because before we get into the cancer thing, uh, it's very important because we're going to talk about who's running the EPA today. Now, the problem is, is no matter who you vote for, the EPA is going to stay. Okay? The EPA is a policy holder, and the EPA is our lifeline between uh, chronic illness, environmental pollution, and industry profit. So, what is the EPA doing? Let's talk about it. Now, remember, politics has nothing to do with this. The EPA is good and bad through a variety of, of sources. So, we can't really necessarily say that it's an administrative thing. And that's why I wanted to talk about that pill earlier. It's not always choosing red or blue, like in the matrix. Um, and it's the same with our politics, you know, red or blue has very little to do with it. In, in essence, the problem are these institutions that outlast presidencies. And these are the people that are at the front line that are selling us <clears throat> and they're selling our health out. And you know what? I've been talking, I've been making a lot of friends recently. I thought my cancer was very weird, but I'm finding that a lot of my friends have hybrid cancers as well or misdiagnosed cancers or cancers that are treated incorrectly because they're thought of as something else. I've been diagnosed with multiple versions of different cancers and the doctors are still don't know what to do. And so they're just kind of like, hey, you know, this, this is your last chance. This pill is your last chance. So we're going we're gonna to do it and we're going to do it while we're fighting for corporate pollution responsibility. So Environmental Pollution Agency, I like that. <laughs> I like how Colleen put that in there. So let's start off with today's quote, everybody. 
Today's quote is by Bill Watterson. And if you're not familiar with Bill Watterson, he created Calvin and Hobbes. Um, but, you know, we're going to talk about the EPA has sold us out. Now, what we can do uh, in the end, um, there should be a link on my Facebook page. Um, if you go out of this live feed and you go back on my timeline, there should be a link there to my YouTube page. Hey, Emma, thanks for joining us from UK. Camilla joining us from UK. And um, Margarita Marquez, thanks for joining. So we're going to talk about selling out because that's what the EPA has done. They've sold us out. Now, this quote I really love, selling out is usually more a matter of buying in. Sell out and you're really buying into someone else's system of values, rules, and rewards. Fantastic, right? So let's go back here to the chats. So um, again, if you can come over to YouTube, you can you can join the conversation and 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 put your chat in, and it goes live in the video. If not, I'm going to be watching here on YouTube on Facebook and trying to also bring in your comments as well, everybody. So everyone is part of the conversation. So now, why I bring up that quote is because the most important thing we need to talk about at the EPA is that. Who's running the EPA right now is a former coal lobbyist. Okay, so cancer of the body politic. Again, um, the idea is that um, cancer comes in, it takes over the old cells, it switches them around. What's up, Matt? Nice to see you. Kaz, thank you for joining today. Um, Colleen, thank you for putting that link up. Uh, guys on Facebook, there's a link right there now. Colleen popped up. That'll pop you over to YouTube, and you can type your comments in. I want to hear what you have to say. Remember, it's a conversation. So we're going to talk about the EPA. Now, the reason that I bring up cancer is because this can, there is a cancer of the body politic. And what I mean by that is specifically this. The same way that my cancer grows uncontrollably, the corporations have put people in power that now run the regulatory agencies. Okay? Now, a lot of people already know this, but I just want to make sure it's very clear. The lobbyists have put people in power over the regulatory agencies, or they have destroyed regulatory agencies. Now, the best example in the world of this is the EPA. Let's talk about Andrew Wheeler. Now, Andrew Wheeler is, if you're not familiar with him, thank you. Um, if you're not familiar with Andrew Wheeler, he was the vice president of the Washington Coal Club. He's a coal lobbyist. One more time. The current administrator of our Environmental Protection Agency was a former coal lobbyist. Of, he was the vice president of the Washington Coal Club. Now, the Washington Coal Club was a lobbying group of more than 300 coal producers, lawmakers, business leaders and policy experts, okay? Policy experts mean people that work in the industry that find ways to make spin. This is the man in charge of protecting us. So as you can imagine what's gonna happen, I put up a press release right now that the EPA did. Now the EPA withdraws information requests for the oil and gas industry. Well, what does that mean exactly? Well, what we're looking at is in 2019, Andrew Wheeler, push through so many changes that now the oil and gas companies do not have to report their emissions. This is one step worse than what's called best management practices. Now, let's get into that. Now, there's a fancy political term people like to use for it called deregulation. And I'd like to get away from that term because, again, we have people on both sides of the aisle here that are fighting for the clean environment. So please, Think of it like the matrix. It's not always a blue pill or a red pill. Sometimes life gives you another colored pill, and that's the one you have to eat. So here we are, right? The EPA is in charge of a coal lobby. So the first thing they do is tell the coal producers, oil producers, and the worst polluters that we have that they no longer have to report their emissions. This is what's called best management practices. Uh, now, best management practices is when Companies are allowed to act in um, the most, and, and you know, we just say, look, you guys got to be responsible and just tell us if there's a problem, right? So, obviously that has not worked out. Now, two fantastic examples of that are in Florida. Uh, you have big sugar industry, which is out of control and runs best management. And you have um, mining, <clears throat> which is also runs best management practices. And I can guarantee you, neither of those work for people. So anyway... Yeah, I'll move that over. 
All right. Here we go. Hey, Elena. Hey, thanks for joining us. Buenos Sarah. Um, Sylvia, Sylvie, nice to, thanks for joining today. Sorry, I just mispronounced your name. Um, okay. So Andrew Wheeler gets appointed to come in. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is people will say, well, you know, he was a Trump uh, appointee, and that is true. Okay, but what I do want to say, and I'm by no means uh, getting political in any way, shape, or form, but what I want to say is that we have a situation where um, there is basically, through every administration, there are lobbyists that get into in charge of, of major administrations. Here's what I'm talking about. If you now go to opensecrets.org, and you guys know I love this website, right? Opensecrets.org. It'll show you, and I'll put a link down for it. You just go to opensecrets.org forward slash the name of the president you want forward slash lobbyists. Now, this is important because these lobbyists are the people that come in and out of the department. So, for example, you might want to know that the National Corn Growers Association is now the Department of Agriculture Chief of Staff Office of Secretary. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that big business lobbyists are creating and dictating policy. Okay, so what that means is people like us are now um, going to feel the effects of it because everything is going to go into there. So we're going to go back to the EPA now because, again, they're the most wonderful example of, of what's happening right now. Now, one of the reasons I bring up the EPA is that they're recently deciding to back up this claim that um, – and they're, they're giving Monsanto ground now. EPA is. So uh, what I was going to do is uh, what I'm interested in here is showing you guys. These are the EPA's greatest hits of 2019. You can see this on YouTube. I'll just read it out to you guys anyway. And we're going to go over a few of these. And we're going to talk about how we can fight back. What's up, Axel? Hey, man. Good to see you. You know, Axel, I have not been surfing. I've <clears throat> been on some medicine and I'm awaiting a surgery at the end of this month. Uh, so I have to wait until I'm healed from that surgery in order to surf again. So anyway, dude, I've just been thinking about surfing, thinking about you. Um, so let's go back. Now, the EPA has been on a just like going through like a, you know, they're chopping through un unknown territory with a machete. And they're just allowing companies to go back to what's called best management practices, which is uh, means death for those of us that suffer from chronic illnesses due to environmental pollution. Uh, what this means, again, is that anything that had to do with environmental pollution has been rolled back. Now, mind you, the EPA has repealed the clean water rules. So there is a lack of regulation at the moment, um, I believe until November 2020, over what constitutes as okay water. Now, we know that, there, we know that almost every city in America is facing water crisis. And the EPA is just saying there is no water crisis. Andrew Wheeler, actually, I saw an interview with him. He had the audacity to say that over 92% of the water in America meets standard. Well, either that standard is something that's so terrible that it allows us to get chronic illnesses, cancers, and other forms of, of, of chronic disease, or he's just manipulating numbers because we know that you know, we, Flint's a great example, but I mean, we know that it's the same thing holds true in Chicago, in Washington, D.C., in New York. We know the same thing's happening in Florida. Florida has six times the national average cancer rates in areas where the EPA has withdrawn. The EPA has actually left Florida due to being deregulated. The EPA cut 30 percent of its funding. The EPA is no longer allowing uh, routine inspections of products, produce, things like that. Um, it's one of the many agencies that has become a lobbyist agency for corporations. And we are getting sick as a result of it. And, you know, normally I'm a little bit more in the middle about stuff. But when it comes to uh, the EPA and us getting sick and the fact that we can simply stop this, it's not a hard thing to do. You know, we need, we need to really talk about it. And, you know, anyway, the EPA, here's what they did in 2019. The oil and the gas industries now use best management practices. They no longer have to report their emissions. This is very dangerous. There's a place called Cancer Alley in the Mississippi River in New Orleans where there's 600 times the national average cancer rates for the people that live there. And they have over 100 companies that now have unreported, unrestricted, unlimited emissions. It's only going to get worse. 
it's, it's only going to get worse. worse. There's, there's no, no way around this. The second thing they did, removed mercury emission standards for coal companies. Now, if you guys aren't familiar, when mercury gets in the water, it starts to really infiltrate uh, and it accelerates cancer rates. It accelerates a lot of other chronic illnesses. Mercury, not a good thing to have in the water system. Now, there are no longer standards that these companies have to face. So, Captain Dave, welcome for joining us. Uh, the next thing the EPA did, they rescinded water pollution regulations for fracking on federal and Indian lands. Now, this is another slap in the face uh, by the American government to all Native peoples. Um, so, you know, this is another one that's really bad. Um, and I think that what's happening there is, you know, we're seeing... Um, you know, we're, we're seeing the Indian lands, they're, they're putting the pipelines through regardless of what people want. Uh, and that's what we see. We see everybody protest, but the, the things still happen. The pipelines still go through, the mess still happens. So we need to talk more about changes here at the end of this episode. Um, they revoked California's right to set its own stringent emission standards. Now this is kind of funny because, and again, I don't want to get political, but I just want to point out that there's an inconsistency here. Uh, Andrew Wheeler is of the Republican Party and was nominated by Trump. Their whole thing is about states' rights, so they're trying to deregulate. Meanwhile, they have removed the state's right for cleaner air, which is kind of draconic. And again, every administration does their own stuff, so I'm not like, but I'm just talking about this administration because we're living in this administration right now, and we're getting sicker as time goes on, exactly, Camilla, poison in all directions. And we need to really think about this. It's, it's hitting us through the air, through the water, through our food, through our nature, you know, um, and, and, and we really need to think about this. We need to reclaim our nature, which is why I ask everybody to look through politics, not through the form of your party, but look through politics through the lens of environmentalism and see who's going to do your best. That's where OpenSecrets.org comes in. Anyway, back to the EPA. More stuff that they really messed up this year. I mean, what I call their greatest hits. Um, they also are registering new uses for the insecticide sulfoxlaflor. <laughs> this is a really hard one for me to say, guys. Sulfoxlaflor. I should have practiced that, but I didn't. Um, and restoring previously registered uses for this horrible, horrible toxin, which has been considered highly toxic to bees. Now, anybody that's been following the environmental realm knows that what's toxic to bees is not good. We're losing our bees little by little. Um, and uh, yes, I agree. Vicki Palmer says the EPA needs to be taken down. Sherry Allen, the rights of nature movement in Florida seems to be our best hope. And you know what, Sherry? I totally agree. When it started, I was, I don't want to say skeptical, but I thought, can it really work? And the more I see you guys doing with the rights of nature, um, the more I'm super impressed. And I was actually going to talk about that as one of the, the, the solutions that we need to talk about. So by showing you guys all this with the EPA, now I want to bring up again, and I don't want the EPA to be dismantled. And I don't want this to come off as political, everybody, please. Remember that the EPA was started by the Republicans, by Richard Nixon, out of all people. All we think about Nixon is kind of his disgrace and Watergate, but Big picture, he established the EPA, and the EPA has done a lot of amazing things in its time. You know, think of, of Love Canal. Think of a, a lot of places that they have cleaned up. Um, now, one thing that they do that I find problematic is we have what are in America what are called super funds. Now, a lot of you may be familiar with super funds, maybe not familiar with super funds. Super funds are areas that are so toxic from envi environmental pollution from companies, environmental waste from companies, that the EPA takes them over and the EPA says, we'll take it from here. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you're a taxpayer, you're paying for some major corporation to come in, abuse the land, destroy things, get all of us sick, and then they walk away with no bill. And we actually foot the bill for this. One more great example happens in Florida. Um, they have a lot of Superfund sites. And these Superfund sites are paid for by the taxpayers and the companies that abandon these sites don't have to pay anything. Another great example, uh, my friend Heather talks a lot about this, um, are also in Massachusetts, uh, where we have a lot of leftover issues and the same thing's going on in Texas. And all these things are, are running and bleeding this pollution into our water supply. 
and into our air supply. Just recently in Florida, there's, they've really been introducing and explaining BMAAs, which are the toxins that come from the waters. So you don't even have to go in the water to get the toxins that are creating neurological damage <clears throat> through the red tide. They're actually coming through the air and they're discovering that they can go up to, I believe, 30 miles inland. So there's a lot to consider here. Uh, we are at the brink. And you know what? Andrew Wheeler did say one thing that I think is interesting. He said that the national water access to safe water is the number one issue facing America. Um, now, again, this is an inconsistency in logic on his part because he also says that climate change is not an immediate problem. Although the funny thing is, he accidentally admits that it is an issue. <laughs> Even though his platform is supposed to be that it's not an issue. He actually said in an interview by accident that it's not an immediate issue. He sees it as happening 50 to 75 years off. So if you are denying climate change, do know that Andrew Wheeler, the coal lobbyist, believes in it, oddly enough. Um, now, climate change has become a heated political debate. So let's get away from that for a quick second, but talk more about the water. Now, he said that the water problem is the number one problem in America, and I do agree in a weird way with Andrew Wheeler, which I never thought I would on this point, but we do have a problem where these companies are polluting directly into our waters. You know, Florida is another great example, um, and so is Cancer Alley in the Mississippi. They are directly allowed, they're given permits by the state in, in to allow a certain amount of wastewater to come back out into the public water supply. So what they do is they dump it into rivers saying, well, you know what, it'll dilute by the time it gets to the towns. And then when the towns pull it in, they're going to put it into their um, wastewater treatment plants, which generally just use chlorine, which is not, I mean, I tested water samples in recently when I was making a documentary and we found insane, like 20 times the level of chlorine allowed that's used to just bleach out the problematic stuff. It doesn't work, everybody. <laughs> that's not a solution. And as a result, everybody that lives on these waterways is, has accelerated rates of cancer. Now, that's what brings it back to this idea. Again, the idea is the cancer of the body politic. You know, we are allowing in the polluters to run, keeping an eye on the pollution. This is no good. This doesn't do any good for anybody. Um, it's why the EPA was created. It was created with good intention, but it has, and I, it's not just suddenly a problem. It's been happening for a long time. Uh, and the EPA has sold out for a long time, but with their budget cut by 30%, they're shutting almost everything down. Um, so the EPA has actually been neutered, dismantled, and now has become a bit of a shill for these corporations. Now, there are amazing amounts of, of rollbacks. Now, I know a lot of people say deregulation is good. It's good for the companies. It is. It's great for the companies. Um, but again, that just means that they're allowed to pump as much stuff into the waterways as they want, uh, which is not good for people like me that have chronic illness, that have cancer. It's not good for kids that grow up around these waterways. It's not good for animals that drink this water. Um, you know, we are entering an understanding that our environment is, is difficult. So, in the bad news, that's about the EPA. The EPA, we need to understand, have let us down. So what do we do? How do we fight back? That's actually the more important thing I want to talk about today. Um, EPA outweighs any presidency, any time, uh, anybody that's in charge. So what we need to do is think about who's in charge of the EPA. Now, how do we put pressure on that person? Okay, like people don't talk about Andrew Wheeler nearly, nearly enough. People are not checking his facts. People are not looking at his, what he's doing. The EPA is slipping by. You know why? Because they've never been malignant. You know, I mean, they've never been a problem. Um, they've just always been there and we always thought they did a good job. Now, there are other places that are doing a great job within the government. So it's not like the EPA can't do a job. It's the fact that, again, the lobbyists have put it, been put in control of who oversees the polluters. So the polluters are regulating the polluters. Now, who loses in this is all of us, okay? And eventually what happens is we have to pay for super funds. And if you're not familiar with super funds, <coughs> excuse me, 
Just go to Google, type in Superfunds EPA, and your mind will be blown. Um, there are so many Superfund sites. There are so many toxic leftovers from corporate pollution. So, you know, a lot of people get mad at me and say, well, why do you always talk about these companies, you know, that are doing problems, that are problems? Because it's invisible and, and we need to bring it to light. You know, this is 2020. This is the year where all of us that are sick are done with being sick. We're, we're not going to allow you to continue to poison more children. We're not going to allow you to continue to poison more people. We're not going to allow you to continue what you're doing. This is no longer acceptable. We have social media. We have cameras. There are thousands of us. We way outnumber you guys, and we're going to bring you to light. We're going to expose you. That's what we're going to do. You're killing us, and we're going to fight back by exposing you. And there's a lot of environmental criminals. Andrew Wheeler, in my mind, is an environmental criminal. Now, the funny thing is, if you look at the current administration, what they've done is made environmental activists the number one domestic terrorist threat in the country. And I'm not making that up either. Ladies and gentlemen, me doing a podcast talking about exposing environmental issues is higher up on the Department of Justice's list than actual terrorist plots, actual terrorism issues, um, people poisoning our children. You know, they're, they're going to spend all this money. Right now, they're coming after Direct Action Everywhere, a very brave group that goes in and does animal liberation. They're suing my friend Priya and a few other people under multiple federal lawsuits. By the way, if you guys can, go to Direct Action Everywhere. Direct Action Everywhere. Uh, I don't usually talk much about it, but they do need to raise money for their defense. And they have a huge... Um, they're facing like fe eight or nine felonies from the federal government. Because again, speaking up as an activist is becoming criminalized in our country. That's something that's never happened before. The EPA is allowing these countries to have impunity and to run free. Okay, while people like me are becoming criminalized and people like Pri are becoming criminalized. So how can we be the number one domestic threat? That just seems absurd. So we're getting into a very, uh, we're entering a very dangerous <clears throat> totalitarian kind of thinking from a lot of these institutions that for a long time have done a great job for all of us. Um, I don't mean to bemoan anybody in the Department of Justice, but man, there's a lot more important things going on than a bunch of us trying to fight for cleaner water or cleaner air or a better future or less cancer or please stop giving children, you know, birth defects and cancer. Like, why don't you guys go do this? How about the environmental criminals you actually go investigate? Not people like me or Priya, but you guys go investigate <clears throat> the real ones, the real criminals that are out there. And if you need a list, we're more than happy. There's a, there's a billion of us that can give you a list of environmental criminals. We all know who they are. That's the crazy thing. It's not like a, you know, a big secret. We all, we all know who they are. So anyway, uh, Emma says, we need to make 2020 the year of change. Absolutely. Our good will eventually overcome their evil. And you know what? I agree 100%. This is the beauty of it. David and Gavirs Goliath. You know, we are... As a group, um, we think we're David, but we're really Goliath, and we don't know that. So the, the beauty is we have more power together, you know. Um, and, it, and you know what? Sherry's right. Um, 30 miles inland, okay, toxin spores were found. Tests were done by the Florida Gulf Coast University. She moved from Sarasota because of the nodules in my lungs. Oh, my gosh, after breathing the air one mile inland. Sherry, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Um, you know, you're part of us, and this is where we start to fight back. You know, we're the people that have these unknown or misdiagnosed or misunderstood cancers. And we actually, our weird hybrid stuff is starting to outnumber the traditional cancers and the traditional treatments. So as people continue to get these hybrid cancers, we have to remember that, okay, we cannot, the EPA actually left Florida, all right? It was actually kicked out in 2004 by the state when the state lost its ability to go through the federal level the state decided to deregulate and they kicked the EPA out. So people in, the, in Florida have been exposed to cancer-causing elements in an alarming fashion through so many ways. And it's really, 
uh, it's really sad when you go down there and you see, but, but at the same time, this we got to always remember, this is also where some of the best activists in the world are. You know, you cannot, people in Florida are active and they fight back and that's a beauty. And that's, they're my inspiration for this year because all of us with cancer need to come together. All of us that want a better future need to come together. Again, it's not red or blue. It's the, it's looking not through environmentalism from the lens of your politician, but looking at your politician through the lens of environmentalism. Go to opensecrets.org and look who the lobbyists are. Uh, look who's putting in money in their campaigns. Look who's they're going to owe things to. Look what lobbyists they're going to owe things to. Uh, again, I, I'm going to put a link down here. Go to opensecrets.org. Look at the lobbyists that currently run things. And I'm afraid that the swamp has been drained by adding in some pythons. Now, only people in Florida will get that particular um, thing. Anyway, um, yes, Sherry says, absolutely. And Andrea says, they're afraid of strength of information. By having this podcast talking about reality, they are exposed and get people get together. Absolutely. And you know what? That's what I love the most is that we all spend time talking to each other here and we all share our stories. And if you guys have links, please add them. Anything about the EPA, I'm going to add a few once it's done. So we come back to what do we do to fight back? Well, guess what? We have an election this year. This is wonderful. So we have all the power. You know, just the way that if you have a company, corporation you don't like, you can boycott them. We can now boycott politicians or policies. Okay? Um, now, this is going to get down to a spot where, again, please... Go to OpenSecrets.org. Look at the politicians. Look who look who they owe money to. They're going to be the people that are going to be making the laws in 2020. The EPA has already let us down. Um, they have deregulated everything. By the way, Andrew Wheeler also wanted to open up the um, the national parks to uh, oil and gas industry. So you know, look, we know that we're not going to win against them, but we need to fight back with us. All right, um, you know the. Nobody in any administration is going to put anybody in that's going to help us. I think we've learned that by now. On the other hand, what do we do? Well, one of the great places you can start is, and Stell doesn't even know I'm going to talk about this. My friend Stell Bailey runs uh, fightforzero.org. Sorry, my alarm keeps going off on my Facebook to take my medicine. Um, fight for, fightforzero.org. Uh, and what they do is create a database. They started this a long time ago, creating a tracking database of people that are getting sick in the areas and then tracking the pollution around them. And they've been fighting for, against PFAS a lot. And they're actually working with Congress right now to put a bill through that would be a huge win for environmentalism, be a huge win for keeping corporate pollution out of water. I'm going to put a link down there. I encourage you to go to fightforzero.org. See how you can get involved. They're voting on it. Uh, it's an exciting year. 2020 is an exciting year, and water has to be one of our issues, um, which, again, oddly enough, I agree with Andrew Wheeler about. I don't agree with his statement that it's more important than, than um, climate change because here's why. Because once you do that, you let corporations off the hook. I'm not about letting corporations off the hook. Okay? Like, you guys can discuss climate change all you want. The fact is they're polluting and they're causing issues, and we all know that. It's not like we haven't figured that out. Um, so we have to just start from that point and move forward. So Stell Bailey has this amazing um, reserve of information down there, and they're working with legislation to make changes. So again, we can make changes with the government, but that's the government. Those are politicians whose lives depend on popularity. People that are appointed, you have to remember this, are only removed if Congress removes them or if they are appointed by somebody else. Somebody else appoints them. So, who's, who's running for president? Who do they want to put in for the EPA? Have we even talked about the EPA? You know, have we talked about clean water in the presidency? <clears throat> Everybody wants to keep their job this year. So, we can put, it's an amazing time for us to put pressure on our local politicians all the way up to the top and demand a better future, demand less cancer, demand less chronic illness, demand less pollution, demand less environmental impact from corporations because they are killing us for profit. And as somebody with cancer, I just say that flat out. That's how I feel. Um, a lot of people that I know 
feel the same way. And we're not going to let them get away with it anymore. Uh, like I said, this year is very exciting. We have the opportunity to expose them a lot. So that's one thing you can do is go look at your local politicians at OpenSecrets.org. Look at who they're beholden to. Um, go through, Google through, look up EPA regulations. Find out what's happening there. Um, the best thing you can do, because no journalist is going to inform you. I'm going to put some links down here when I'm done. But no journalist is going to tell you what's up. They're all going to follow the party lines. They're going to follow whatever the stupid rhetoric is at the moment or the stupid story is at the moment, which are generally distraction stories. You know, I mean, think about this. We have lost all protection. There's no more protection against mercury going into our water supply. Think about your local water supply. Your local water supply provides you with tap water. Now, you may not drink tap water. So suddenly you're going to get into the issue of are you supporting Nestle? Do you support bottled water? Do you have a filtration system? Are you buying bottled water and causing another issue down the road? There's all these things that come into it. Or are you drinking cancer? You know, if you're out of your tap, you might be. Um, I tested tap water in an area and I found um, 10 times the allowable amount of radon, which causes cancer. And I tested it in tap water and I tested it in a public elementary school and I got those same results. So there's no protection. You're, if you don't drink the water, you're still going to shower in it. And you know what? When the shower gets hot, guess what? Your dermis is one of the largest living organs on your body. I believe it's something like, it's like 90% of your living organs or so. It, it is the largest living organ on your body, which means that when you take a shower, it absorbs everything in your water. Um, that has caused a lot of illnesses and a lot of doctors will not comment on this. This is why Stell Bailey's work is so important and fightforzero.org is so important because the doctors, the moment they connect chronic illness, like I have, with environmental pollution, then you allow lawsuits like Monsanto. Now you'll notice that right now the administration is backing off and saying that they're actually backing Monsanto in this thing, which is really troubling. And it's something else to consider because a lot of people have gotten cancer from this. Um, you know, again, as somebody with cancer from environmental pollution that they cannot determine, and from having a lot of friends that have hybrid cancers, uh, I want to make this year the year of really exposing environmental pollution, polluters and pollution as a risk and as a result of our health and what, what happens to us. Um, and a great example is Florida. Uh, and a great example of how to fight back is Florida, and that's why Fight for Zero is a great example. You need to know what your local laws are. You need to know what's going in your local water. And it's not easy. You know, they keep it like a big labyrinth so that it's hard to gauge and it's hard to put together. Um, and uh, Vicky, <laughs> uh, your skin. <clears throat> so Vicky, your skin absorbs all the toxins from the water. So think about that. Um, <clears throat> so if you're using municipal water <clears throat> and your municipal water is filled with chlorine and it's drawn from the river and the river is allowed by law to create and, and take an ex excess amount of radiation, for example, uh, again, we'll use Florida, the mining dumps in so much radiation into the Peace River and all these people take their water off this river. Same thing happens in the Mississippi. In the Mississippi River in, in New Orleans, out of all places, in a 100-mile stretch called Cancer Alley, 100 companies dump their pollution, and it's all legal, and this is the problem. The problem is it's all legal. The problem is the system doesn't work. Uh, most of us already know that. So changing, um, changing politicians isn't going to solve our problem. Right? Like changing who's in the script. It's kind of like casting. What we need to do is find a way to change the script. So it's more important than politicians. Because again, the EPA will be here forever. Again, it was, you know, it's, we can't look at it in, in a red or blue. We have to look at it as an in-between. Do not look at environmentalism through the eyes of your politician. Look at your politician through the eyes of environmentalism. And just make sure that whatever's happening takes us one step forward to regaining our steps of, of freedom. Again, best management practices, the best example of that is really if you look at Florida, uh, fa the fact that they've deregulated so badly that sugar and mining dump radioactivity and all kinds of nasty toxins into the water. And as a result, the state number one death is cancer. 
And that comes from cancer of the body politic. And not from our politicians, because I don't think anybody actually believes any politicians are good. Like, it's a little ridiculous. We're all adults. We all think that they're on the take. We all know they're on the take. They're just politicians. Uh, most of them are puppets anyway. But the problem is, is who do they appoint? And when you appoint somebody, you can't really get removed. It's like a judge. Um, and again, um, there are a lot of judges that will rule in favor of of the polluters. Another interesting example. Yeah, Carrie Bauer says Nosaic. If you guys go to Nosaic, that's another group that fights pollution. It has a lot of great information about how corporations, when allowed to self-regulate, will pollute and kill and create excessive cancer rates. And this is a something that we can stop. This is the amazing thing. There are cancers that are unstoppable, but we have cancers we can stop in our control. And it is our duty to do this because if we can just prevent one more child from getting sick or from having to go through what I go through, what other people I know go through, that is the only thing that we're here for. You know, if you're an adult, you already have your ways, you're set in your ways, don't care, doesn't matter what you think. We need to, we need to fight for the kids, we need to fight for the next generation and put them before everything you've ever heard in your life and, and think about how we can save them and what are we going to do? You know, it's a big topic. There's no simple solution. But we have an election year which gives us a lot of leverage to create a lot of pressure and politicians actually listen to us during these years, um, although it never seems like it. They have to. And we, need, we need water on there. Cody Phillips says one water. Yes, absolutely. One water. This is us this year, guys. So, again, go to OpenSecrets.org. I'm going to put some more um, links down underneath. Thank you, everybody, for joining me on Monday. I know it's a little weird to have it on a Monday. Um, this is my first episode of 2020, episode 18. Uh, to let you know, next week we are going to talk to Reef.org. And I don't know, most of my friends that are divers will know who Reef.org is. But they're a group that allows citizen divers to continue to monitor the health of the oceans. And it's an amazing program. They also offer free fish identification groups. Carrie Bauer says, Watch Dark Waters. Great movie about DuPont poisoning the people. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it. Hey, Chris, good to see you, man. Um, but Carrie's right. Dark Waters is an incredible film. There is uh, an amazing documentary called Troubled Waters that my friend Kat Chase and Colleen made. Um, check that out if you can. Uh, that is an incredible documentary in Florida about what's happening. Um, and there is another documentary called The Devil We Know about DuPont and PFAS. And if you're not familiar with what's happening with that, I watched that documentary and I, I had documentary envy. I was like, man, I wish I would have made that documentary because these guys bring to light some of the most important things that we all need to know and we need to know because we've been worldwide toxically infected. I don't know if toxically is a word. Uh, anyway, it has, and we have been, and we need to know about these things. And again, guys, this is our, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a political year. Forget about your local politicians. Forget about your political party. Think about your local politicians, OpenSecrets.org. Think about the lobbyists that they owe favors to. Let's um, think to vote and start with our water and with our future first. And I think that's one way we can really fight back as a group. Um, so again, I'm going to put some links down. Go to Stel Bailey's fightforzero.org. I, I don't even know if Stel's watching right now, but I, probably, I, I didn't talk to her about mentioning this, but I think it's a great example. And you'll find that every local community has activists. And this is the time for grassroots activism. Sherry Allen, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing what happened to you also. It's a very intimate thing, and it's a very hard thing to share. And I really appreciate it because by sharing our chronic illnesses from environmental pollution, other people that have them can find us, meet us, join us, and we can all become one voice. And we need to become our own lobby. You know, we are a section that's been ignored, the people with weird hybrid cancers, the people with unexplainable tumors and unexplainable um, things that happen after living somewhere where these things happen all the time. Bayshore High School, Florida, another great example. Um, yeah, Cody says Fight for Zero is definitely on their on the game. Yes, um, Stell is a great example. And again, everybody 
you can organize your local community. What's happening in your area? There is somebody watching. You need to pay attention to your local watchdogs. You need to know what's in your tap water. You need to really, really, really consider it. Because again, your kid's future is at stake. And we're allowing companies to pollute our waterways where our local communities withdraw the water from. It's how every neighborhood works. It's just how our water works in this country. We have aquifers that are being polluted by corporate polluters. And we have the EPA allowing it all because it's now being run by a corporate polluter. So we have to lose we have to lose faith in them. And you know what? We lose a little faith in them. We need to gain some faith in ourselves. We need to gain some faith in our voice, our world, our protection, our ability. And again, I, I, I look at Florida. Florida has some of the best activists I've ever seen in my life. They fight back. They go to local community meetings. Um, and they are one of the best examples in the country that you can see of how communities fight back. They don't want to get to where it's Flint. You know, they want to finish it first. So they are trying to derail that um, tragedy. And I think they're incredible. So hats off to everybody in Florida. You guys really are amazing activists. Um, shame on you, everybody in charge in Florida. And that includes Mosaic's former lawyer becoming now head of the FDP. I could go on and on. That's for a future episode. I'm not going to talk about it now, but it's for a future episode, everybody. And uh, hey, Barbara, thanks for joining today. Hey, Phoebe, I'm glad you joined us also. Um, so yes, everybody, thanks for joining in. Listen, it's something that we all need to do together. Remember, we're one community. We are one. We're all brothers and sisters. We all have future generations that we want to see grow healthier. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I almost forgot. I have to admit, I'm getting a little forgetful on this medicine. Sherry says, yes, look. Individual counties are forming rights of nature groups to change regulations and legislation. Look them up and hook up with us. I'm in Polk County. Um, Sherry, if you have a good link that you could pop up right here on the feed for everybody um, to go ahead and, and click on to, I would love that. Because, again, everybody, I, 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 I didn't know. I just heard about rights of nature when I interviewed Carl Diegert, who's also running a, a rights of nature group. Um, and... It really blew my mind, you know, if, if corporations are allowed citizenship, why isn't nature? And again, with us, there's that sliding scale of morality between nature and corporate greed. You know, we understand that we have to be in there. So the concept of removing us from that sliding scale is absurd, and that's what best management practices does. Boop, we're gone. Corporate greed, environmental <clears throat> pollution, and it's just a match made in heaven. Um, but the problem is, is it's creating a hell on earth for those of us that are getting sick. So, again, everybody, I'm super excited. 2020 is the year we fight back. We're going to take it back into our hands. It's our world. It's our environment. It's our future. And we way outnumber everybody. So, you know what? Let's keep the conversation going. Let's keep the dialogue alive. Let's keep ourselves together. Let's keep ourselves organizing. Social media is an incredible thing. Uh, Clean Water Now, Inc. on Facebook, and We Can on Facebook. WeCan.com, amazing. Mitch Allen's group, We Can, great group fighting back. Another great example. And you know what? If you're, if you're in a community that doesn't have this and you're not doing it, contact me. I'll also put some links. I'll show you how to get some good water tests. Find out what's in your tap water. Find out what's in your river. Find out what's in your lake. Find out what they're pulling from your your, you know, your thing. Find out who's getting permitted to put pollution into your local waterways because I'm sorry, but somebody is. It's just how it works. It's what happens. All the factories are not on waterways by accident. They release the water, they release their outpour into the waterways by law and get us sick. And they profit from it. And if it becomes too toxic, they give it to the EPA who create a Superfund site and the taxpayers pay to clean it up while the rest of us die and get sick and get chronic illnesses or birth defects. And it's no more going to happen. We, we need to be like flashlights in the dark and just expose these people. So thank you, everybody, for doing your work. Cody Phillips, if I may, you're also a clean water, uh, amazing, uh, somebody that I, I really look up to and somebody who has stood strong um, for clean water. 
and you're also very modest, so I hope I'm allowed to say that, but I wanted to give you some props, because it's really great to see all these water warriors on here, like Barbara, and Phoebe, and Camilla, and Andrea, and Sherry, Vicky, I know Mitch, um, you know, there's a lot of people on here, I know Bruce is doing a lot of work, Colleen Gill, by the way, everybody, if you're not familiar with Colleen, Colleen is um, just recently got some work where she can go do water testing and water sampling, and she's making a huge impact in her local community. And every local community, how they treat the water is going to affect how we are all treated by water towards the end. It's our water. Remember that, everybody. It's our water. All right? Anyway, I'm so glad to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Episode 18, first episode of 2020. We are back stronger than ever. Uh, every time I have to take one of those little doses of radiation, my commitment to exposing what's happening out there gets even stronger and I have a, a even more of a drive than I had before. And all of you guys inspire me to continue. And as a group together, we're going to do it and we're going to make a change. 2020 is our year. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Please go check out some of the, the websites I mentioned. I'll put some links down here as well. And yes, yeah, Sherry, water is life. 100% agree. That's all we have is water, guys. Our body needs it. We're over 90% of it. Um, we need to defend it and fight for it because if we let them to continue to pollute it, the only answer is going to be is that the same people that pollute it are going to offer us fresh water. Okay? Um, when there was a water stack that broke and 200 million gallons of radioactive water leaked into the Florida aquifer and people started getting sick in, in Florida, Mosaic, the same company that poisoned them, gave them fresh water. So don't think that polluting our water doesn't help them out their long term either because then they can create their own water filtration systems and you don't want to be dependent on the companies that are willing to kill you for profit to take care of you There's, it doesn't even make sense anyway just throwing that out there okay guys great to see you guys you guys are my family and uh, it's always wonderful to spend my days with you and great to hear so many different ideas today thank you all for joining and uh, I can't wait to see you all next week when we join Reef.org. Then the week after, we have a, I have a friend uh, who's actually an author that's going to come join us who works on doing primate research for the IUCN Red List. And we're going to talk about species extinction and the Red List. And we're going to talk to this author about some of those topics as well and learn how the IUCN Red List works. People talk about the Red List a lot, but there's still some confusion over how that how that is actually used. Hey, Matt, good to see you. Hey, Joanna, thanks for joining um, I appreciate it, guys. Remember, cancer of the body politic. EPA is now run by a former coal lobbyist and vice president of the Washington Coal Club. We have been sold out. We've lost all of our protections uh, through the EPA, and we now need to become our own private security. We need to take it back into our hands, which is the idea of democracy anyway. What a perfect year. What a better year than a voting year to do this. Anyway, everybody, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it, everybody. Happy 2020, and I can't wait to see you all next week. It'll be Monday again. I'm going to still be at one of the preemptive offices until I can get my next studio together. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. We are the people, Sherry. And you know what? Like Mitch says, we the people are pissed off. <laughs> all right, everybody. Remember, keep the conversation alive. It's our world. Let's talk about it.